Uh, hi, uh, my name is Lloyd Evans and uh, I've been reviewing the Edinburgh Fringe since 2003 and I've also taken my own solo show up there uh, so I'm going to dis discuss um, how to take a show to Edinburgh uh, with various tips and bits of advice and how to save money and so on and I'll also be explaining how the West End transfer thing works um, and I'll be revealing how I won the Edinburgh Festival which I did uh, so the first thing, the cost. Um, let's say of a solo show in a medium-sized venue of say 40 seats, that will cost you probably five or six thousand pounds uh, with a few extras. Um, some venues will let you do just a week or two weeks, which saves you a bit, um, but it doesn't save you on your fixed costs like travel to Edinburgh and uh, insurance and advertising. So you will save a bit, but um, if your show's a hit, you'll rather wish you'd done the full three weeks. Um, so where do you get uh, five or six thousand pounds from? Well, your parents, obviously. Uh, you'll find they're quite open to the idea, uh, if you ask them nicely, at Taser Point. Uh, and what are you going to spend their five or six thousand pounds on? Well, three things, uh, accommodation, venue hire and marketing. Uh, a single room in a hostel will cost about forty-five pounds a night, so that's a thousand pounds gone. Someone may, may say to you, uh, come and stay in my flat, uh, which is great. Make sure the other people in the flat know that you're going to be there. Uh, and make sure that you've got a, a, a place of your own to retreat to, because the festival is quite hard work and you will need someone to recuperate. Um, so venue hire depends on the size, obviously, and the location. Um, but um, say you know a, a forty-seat venue will want about two or two and a half thousand pounds for the full three weeks for the venue hire. Uh, better to choose an established venue rather than a new one because they tend to be more centrally located, and regular festival goers will know where they are. Uh, so that helps. Um, and uh, you uh, should check whether the hire includes the cost of a um, technician and an usher. Uh, because it's not always clear if it does and if they oblige you to hire them at the last minute that will cost you £30 per, per person uh, per performance so if you have to hire both of them that will add £400 a week to your costs um, and you may be able to do a, a, a swap with somebody else do a deal you usher their show they usher yours so that's worth checking um, a few extras insurance should cost you about £100 for the entire festival um, uh, you'll need to have any electrical equipment tested that's usually £30 £50 per piece of kit uh, and flyers uh, and the venue will probably have a deal with a printer, so expect to spend about um, £100 on 5,000 flyers and 50 posters. That's uh, pretty much uh, enough to get you started. It's easy to buy more once you're up there. Um, but those all add up, those extras, so take at least an extra 500 quid in your back pocket, I would say, possibly a bit more. Uh, advertising, your biggest cost is the brochure, uh, and uh, it's a few hundred pounds just for a listing and an advert is quite a lot more than that uh, but get the largest advert you can afford because the uh, brochure is brilliant uh, it really is it's copied everywhere but nowhere is good as, is as good as the edinburgh fringe brochure uh, it's very concise very well designed very informative and succinct and it's extremely well distributed uh, as well uh, it's 400 pages long and it has three and a half thousand shows in it so you have to be there Listing and advert, uh, they'll be on separate pages. That's important because what happens is that people go out to the festival and they pick up the brochure and they find 12 great shows they're going to see and then they uh, put the brochure down and forget all about them. Then they pick it up again a day later and find another 12 great shows. So if you're in the brochure twice, you've doubled your chances of being seen more than once and that's important. That's how you start to sell tickets, by getting your name out there. Um, there are other outlets, there are specialist magazines up there and you can easily blow 500 quid or 1,000 quid advertising in those places. Uh, it's difficult to gauge how much value you're getting actually when you go outside the brochure for uh, away from the brochure for advertising because not everyone reads those other magazines, those other websites, but everyone reads the brochure. So I would concentrate your investment in the brochure. Uh, you need a poster. It need not be colour. Black and white will stand out better actually against all colour ones. Uh, and especially if it's um, relevant to your show, if it's about radical politics or anarchy or old newspaper headlines, black and white can really work very well. So you have to really make your mark against uh, three and a half thousand other shows. And Edinburgh is a very low-tech environment, um, and uh, so you have to leaflet, you have to hand out flyers in the street, um, which you may not look forward to. Uh, I, at first I felt it was a bit like being a beggar, but I got used to it. I started to enjoy it because people come up to you and they talk to you and they chat, and you start to feel that you belong there. You feel more at home than the tourists, and that's a really good feeling. Um, one idea is to turn yourself into a human billboard. Uh, attach a supersized version of your poster to a, a notice board, um, get it on the back of your rucksack and just wander around Edinburgh advertising your show wherever you go. A few people do this, but not enough for it to, to be um, ineffective. Uh, and also, you can go into rival venues wearing your supersized um, poster. Uh, you're not really supposed to advertise in uh, rival venues, but they won't stop you walking in with a rucksack on your back. 
Um, and you can stand in the street as a human placard and people will come up to you, they'll notice you that it's a corny thing, uh, but it does work and corny stuff works in Edinburgh. They'll come up and they'll take a leaflet. Um, and I think that's better than just forcing them on, on random strangers. You can hire people to hand out leaflets for you. Quite pricey. I saw £25 an hour quoted, of which only £7 an hour will go to the person handing out the leaflet. So they just tend to dump them on anyone. And I don't think that's a very um, eff efficient way to advertise your show. You're the best person to, um, to advertise it, to promote it. And uh, flowering will teach you um, how good your marketing is and how good your title is. You'll quickly find that out. You've got two seconds to grab the punter's attention. Message sent and received. That's it. Um, now, the best uh, flowering campaign I ever saw, a woman came up to me and she said, would you like to spend an hour with a thousand dollar a night hooker? Of course, how could I refuse? I went to her show. Um, the title of the show was The Coin Operated Girl. Brilliant marketing, just fantastic. It was full, absolutely packed this show, brilliant. It was all about the life of a, of a cool girl. Um, so if your title is obscure or wacky or arty or meaningless, um, you'll find that you've got to explain your show to people who are taking a leaflet from you. And you see that a lot in, uh, in Edinburgh. You see the, the punter takes a leaflet and then the performer uh, gives them an earful explaining the show. Well, it's much better if uh, your leaflet does that for you. Just get, make sure that the title explains what's in the show. Very informative. You know, if you can be informative and succinct, you will be doing yourself a big favour. Oliver Reed, Wild Thing. Uh, here are some other good titles that communicate them, their meaning and their content immediately. Message sent and received. You've only got two seconds. Uh, and you'll notice that these shows have all got an angle. Um, they're targeted and uh, they don't just say, well, this is a great show and it's for everyone. Uh, you need to find a niche. If you find a niche, then the audience will find you. And that can be difficult. I've noticed uh, particularly for comedians, um, they come up to Edinburgh from the circuit and they do their best 20 minutes and they, they, they do their second best 20 minutes. And then they do their uh, their audience banter and that sort of their, that's their hour. Now, there are hundreds of comedians up there uh, doing those vague sort of shows. Uh, they all seem to have the same marketing strategy as well. They, they have their name. Uh, on their leaflet, and then they have a subtitle, a funny, a funny weirdo subtitle, um, and it all seems to involve food and animals in some strange combination. Um, and uh, but the thing is that these with these wacky subtitles, they're telling the punter something the punter can already see. Uh, you know, they're leafleting outside a comedy venue, so the punter knows it's comedy. Don't need to tell them twice. In the brochure, it'll be listed under comedy, so you, you're wasting time really. With uh, you know, you could be sending a proper, some proper message there, telling the punter what's the theme, what's the angle, what can the punter take away from it. Um, so those angles work. Could be anything. Could be Star Trek, Suicide Notes, How I Broke a World Record. Uh, something that moves outside the normal circuit stuff is what you're after. Uh, a lot of uh, comedians um, do puns on their name. Uh, if you're called Dustin, then you call your show Dustiny Calling. And uh, if you're called Rob, you call your show Rob Smacked. Uh, a lot of people out there doing that. Uh, if you're called Poppy, uh, then it's Poppy Day. Um, uh, the, uh, the thing is that uh, that's very tempting, but it, again, it doesn't tell the punter anything about your show. The difficulty is that when you tell your friends that, uh, that this is what you're going to call your Edinburgh show, they laugh because they know your name already. So seeing it in an unusual context is hilarious to them. And that encourages you, but actually they're not going to be there in Edinburgh and they're not going to buy tickets. Um, so your angle will help get you coverage um, in the press. Now, there's kind of mystery to this, but there, there needn't be a mystery to it. I mean, you've just got to think like a journalist and, you know, journalists barely think at all, apart from, you know, free booze and money for old rope. Um, and newspapers are all after the same thing. The, the, the tabloids and the heavyweight newspapers want the same thing. They want death, sex, celebrity and scandal. So if you can get two or three of those into your show, uh, you're doing really well. Uh, that's why I mentioned Oliver Reed Wild thing. Brilliant. You've got death, sex, you know, celebrity uh, scandal all in one, wrapped up in one person. Uh, and when I saw that title of that show uh, arriving in Edinburgh one year, I knew immediately that was going to be the first show I reviewed, and that title would head my first column. And uh, as a as a reviewer, I want readers. That's uh, that matters to me. I want the readers of my magazine to read my column before they read the music column on one side or the film column on the other side. And I attract readers using the titles of the shows. So when their people are flipping through the magazine, they see Oliver Reed Wild Thing. I know that they will read my article. Whereas if it says stirring wombats with a spoon, you know, it's like selling indigestion. And you might think, well, my wacky title will appeal to wacky readers. Who, who, they're all wacky people wanting to read newspaper. True. Then again, um, my review might be on, on this side. It might be a review of the, the new Tarantino movie. And on the other side, it's a review of uh, the new Radiohead album. That's why I want Oliver Reed Wild Things. So I've got to compete in a global market. So even though you're at Edinburgh, you are in a global market uh, when you're competing for press coverage. Um, another thing the newspapers like is the topical crisis. Now, at the moment, that would be immigration, that would be Syria, that would be FIFA, uh, and it would be athletes on drugs. 
uh, and it will be celebrity paedophiles, although that one is fading a little bit. Um, and it's important that you get the one that's happening right now. Uh, don't get last year's, so don't do, or the year before, so don't do Scottish independence or gay marriage or the credit crunch or Ebola. Uh, you, or Ukraine, you might you might think, well, there's always going to be an abiding interest in these things, but actually there isn't. Newspapers don't really like old stuff. Um, you can try a gimmick show, lots lots of these up in up in Edinburgh, the Dictator Cabaret, uh, Pol Pot, the Opera, uh, Gaddafi, the Musical, An Evening with Adolf Hitler, An Evening with Tony Blair. Um, these shows never really meet expectations, and I think it's because um, people in Edinburgh are on holiday, and I'm not sure they want to spend an hour dancing on the graves of a tyrant's victims. Um, and now you can test uh, whether your show will get coverage. This is very easy. Write a headline based on your show. Uh, is, it e is it easy to write that headline, or is it hard to write that headline? Does, that, does the headline, you know, does it come come to you quite quickly or not? If it's hard to write the headline, then it might be hard to get it into the paper. But then your next question is: ask yourself which part of the media would want um, an article about your show? Would it, you know, be in the art section of the Observer, or would it be in the Scotsman? Could it be discussed on Five Live or Newsnight? If the answer is yes, then send those people your show um send them the content send them the headline and, and write the write the article for them as well i mean don't imagine that journalists like uh, hard work or even know what it is um you can of course hire somebody to do this for you a publicist you've already hired one in fact uh, every venue has a publicity officer uh, and they will give you a list of media contacts which are of questionable value because everyone else performing in that venue will have the same list as well um they'll encourage you to, to send off your uh, press release to um, lots of email addresses. Now, if they are editor at or info at a newspaper, uh, those accounts are invented by newspapers to take pressure off the switchboard. It stops people phoning them up and saying, how can I contact you? How can I send me you some stuff? So they're not really checked. Even if it's um, name.surname at a newspaper, if it's Barry.Blenkins at the Daily Bellyache, uh, by the time that address appears on a contact list at Edinburgh, you can be pretty sure that Barry.Blenkins uh, will no longer check that email account. He will change that email account. So. Um, that's this, this is the truth about emailing journalists. Um, I, as a reviewer, I get about a dozen emails every single day. The uh, traffic increases during Edinburgh. I never open them. I go to the brochure because I need the titles to sell my uh, column to the readers. Um, yeah, it might be a better idea to write an old-fashioned letter um, to a journalist because I don't get many of those. We don't get that many of those <coughs> at all. Um, and uh, it's always nice to get the death threat through the letterbox um, for a change. I always open letters. Um, if you do hire a publicist, uh, just a couple of things. Publicists are very good at publicising themselves to you, the client. Uh, once they've got your business, they may be inclined to sort of sit back and let the show find its level uh, after they sent out the, uh, your press release to their list of media contacts, which is probably the same as everyone else's list of media contacts. Um, and the, the publicist will be up at Edinburgh with perhaps a dozen shows to promote, maybe 15, maybe 20, and they can't see them all immediately. If you're a bit down the list, your publicist may not see your show until week two. Um, even though they've allegedly been uh, promoting it since June. Um, now, so I would ask the publicist when they're going to see your show. Make sure they see it very early on in the festival. Uh, and also tell your publicist what you expect, what you want. And the, the better publicists will really like this. They like talking about strategy. And um, just be specific. Say, can you get me on Radio 4? Can you get me in Broadway Baby? Uh, can you get me in The Scotsman? Or, or pick of the fringe in a national daily? Just ask, see what they say. Now, they may say, yes, uh, or, among our shows last year, uh, we had coverage on all those platforms, plus the Daily Telegraph, plus the Daily Mail, plus the Observer, which sounds great, doesn't it? Except that they haven't specifically promised that you will get coverage in any of those places. They've just said that they have uh, secured coverage for some shows in those places previously. Um, so I would um, just check with your publicist, be, be specific, and don't be afraid to ask them. Just you're paying them, so ask what you know what they can give you. Um, so it's day one of your show. Uh, get the reviewers in immediately. I wouldn't uh, do previews uh, because you're not on the West End. Uh, not yet. You will be soon, no doubt. Um, and um, you may think, oh, uh, I'm underprepared. I'll, I'll get a bad review. Well, don't think you'll get a bad review. You will get a bad review. Everyone gets a bad review. It doesn't matter. They're like headaches. You know, they're a bit annoying. And the next day, they're completely forgotten. Um, something to worry about is selling out. Selling out is annoying, as I found, uh, because it means you've wasted money. You could have sold an extra 20, 30 seats. So that is annoying. Um, and now, the West End transfer thing, I should mention this. Uh, what actually happens is this. A London promoter pre-books a venue in London, then takes a show up to Edinburgh, then brings it back down to London with the words direct from Edinburgh on it giving the suggestion that the show has uh, been swept south on an unstoppable tidal wave of public acclaim. It hasn't, it's just a trick. Um, 
so there you go. And um, how do you win the? How did I win the festival? I won the festival by being there, and um, that's that's it. And that's that's how, and you start to uh, reap the rewards really early in the new year when you're booking a venue and so on and telling people about the festival. Uh, they they start talking about you in a different way. He's going to the festival, you know. What an idiot. Um, <clears throat> no, he's a, he's a, he's a different species. No, they may think you, they may say you're an idiot because they're jealous and it's 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 incredible. And uh, that's that's it. That's the, that's the great thing and when you come back of course you create the story of what happened up there uh, it was brilliant of course it was and um, that's that's how it works what's what happens in Edinburgh stays in Edinburgh uh, especially your money uh, so those are my tips and my show is on YouTube it's called history of feminism as told by a sexist pig put those words in there's or into the search engine and there's a there's a URL thingy here as well if you, you can try if you want or just go to my website Lloyd Evans uh, dot org and that's how I won the Edinburgh festival I hope you do too thank you bye